Hello, welcome back to the Renegade Four Wheel Drive YouTube channel. My name is John. Today we're changing the oil on our 2020 Jeep Gladiator. So, we have a Mobile One Extended Performance Oil Filter. It's part number M1C456A and some Royal Purple 0W20 motor oil. Now the Royal Purple does meet the requirement from Chrysler, the MS6395 uh, requirement for their oil. So this will be safe to run in our 3.6 liter Pentastar V6. Uh, you're going to need a few basic tools, a ratchet, a 13 millimeter socket to remove the drain plug, a 24 millimeter socket to remove the oil filter cap, an extension to make your life a little easier to get to that oil filter cap and a pick to remove the o-ring from the oil filter cap now if you don't have a pick a small screwdriver will work fine so let's get to it Okay, so I pulled my Gladiator on a set of ramps to make it easier. The Jeep is in park with the emergency brake set. Now use the 13 millimeter socket and ratchet to remove the drain plug. Have a pan or a bucket in position under the drain hole because once the drain plug comes out, the oil is going to come out as well. So now that the oil is draining, set the drain plug in a safe location where it won't get lost or covered in dirt. If the drain plug does get covered in dirt, just clean it off before reinstalling. While the old motor oil is draining from the engine, let's remove the cartridge filter. First, open the hood. You have latches on each side as well as one in the center. Undo the latches on the side first, then lift the hood up and undo the center latch. Use the hood prop to hold the hood up. Now that the hood's open, directly in the center of the engine bay, you can see your oil fill cap as well as the cartridge filter. Go ahead and use the 24 millimeter socket and ratchet to remove the oil filter cap. All right, now that the uh, oil filter cap is loose, get you some paper towels and put it in the front down there at the bottom so that as you remove the cap and cartridge it'll capture the oil that's left in the cartridge and it won't wind up all over the front of your engine. Alright, now that you remove the cartridge filter from the vehicle, move it to a work table and separate the filter from the cap. Then using a pick or a screwdriver, remove the old o-ring. Just stick the tip underneath the o-ring and work it off the filter. Be careful not to damage the threads as the filter cap is made of plastic. Get the new o-ring that, that was provided with the cartridge filter and you're going to want to install it on the cap. Get a little bit of the used oil and rub on the o-ring. This will lubricate it and make it a little bit easier to install. So once you put some oil on it, slide it over the threads and seat it back down in the groove. Be very careful not to damage the o-ring. Once you have it seated, go ahead and install the new cartridge. 
just simply push it down into the cap and you'll hear it snap in. Once you've snapped it in, on the other end of the cartridge where the tab is exposed, lube up the o-ring on that side. Alright, so now that we have the cartridge installed onto the cap, go ahead and put it back into the housing on the engine. Thread it in by hand to ensure that you don't cross thread it. Once you've got it snugged up hand tight, use the 24 millimeter socket and ratchet again to tighten it all the way. You don't have to go super tight, just snug it up with the ratchet. So now it's time to reinstall the drain plug. Install the drain plug by hand, get it in hand tight, and then use the 13 millimeter socket and ratchet to snug it up. Be careful not to over tighten the drain plug. Now it's time to fill the engine with new fresh oil. Remove the oil fill cap and if you have a funnel, put a funnel in. It makes it a little bit easier and it helps you prevent from spilling oil all over the place. My engine requires 0W20 so we're putting in 5 quarts of 0W20 Royal Purple Motor Oil. It does meet the requirements from Mopar so it'll work. After adding your five quarts reinstall the oil fill cap. Now that the engine has been filled with oil, it's time to check the oil level. Remove the dipstick, clean off the oil that's on the dipstick, and reinsert it into the tube. Once it's fully seated, pull the dipstick back out and check it again. Since ours is reading between the minimum and maximum level, we're good. The last thing we need to do is reset the oil life. So with the vehicle on the run position, but the engine not running, go to your oil life setting, which is this page right here, and just hold OK. And you're reset. Alright, so as y'all saw, changing your own oil is not very hard, and all you need is a few basic tools, and you're there. So, if you like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe. Follow us on uh, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, we'll leave the links to those at the end of the video. Once again, thank y'all. Have a good day.